best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I'm I'm actually here with Ashley today, and Ashley's got a comic. Ashley, it's a it's it's a real pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, thanks, pleasure's all mine. Well, I I know you you I'm anxious to talk about your comic because you and I have been chatting uh, back and forth as you've been you know getting ready to to you know, put this out, and it's been a real passion project for you. So I just I want to learn about that, but also uh, for everybody listening right now, there is an active campaign. It's up. As we speak, and you know, by the time this video airs, we'll be at least uh, 30, 35 days uh, left in the campaign. So tons of time to get into it. You'll see the link on the screen, a bunch of art there. I really encourage you to, uh, to go and, and support it. So as you're about to hear, it's a, it's a passion project from a great creator. And let's talk about that. So, so Ashley, uh, I, why, why did you decide to make a comic? You know, uh, I've been into comics for a long time, and I think I've probably would have done it sooner but the um you know you have it built up in your mind as to how difficult it's going to be right. and then you actually dip a toe in and you realize it's uh, it's easier than you think that's that's uh <laughs> you know it's funny you're not the first person to say it but but it is exactly that barrier people put in their minds that it's going to be really really difficult to to build a comic and there's just no way to get started you're going to need years of prep um so you you did you found it you found it pretty simple to do yeah, I uh, reached out looking for some artists, and um, page rates were a lot lower than, certainly a lot lower than I thought they'd be, and uh, <laughs> everyone's very eager to get in on the project, and yeah, it just came together. I saved up some money and just uh, got it started. That's awesome. And and when you were reaching out to get an artist, did you? How did you go about doing it? Did you look at portfolios? Did you go to Instagram? How how was your how was your search? Uh, so I, yeah, I went to a few places. I used. Um, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. It was mm-hmm. Reddit that I ended up meeting Daniel Max, who's my interior artist. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and how much experience had Daniel had? Because the work looks really good. He's published a few comics, I think, on uh, crowdfunding. Yeah. He's, uh, a, uh, he's from Brazil. And, you know, it's funny, when I was looking up um, artists, I had five people reach out to me, and three were from Brazil. So, yeah. Good art scene, don't you? No, definitely. And and I mean, the work looks great. When you add the the full coloring in, it's just a tremendous um, it's a tremendous project. As again, people are seeing on their screens. How how'd you find your uh, colorist? Uh, same same place on uh, Reddit. He's a guy named Russell Vincent Yu. Very nice. And so uh, so I tell think, me about you know as people are seeing the art. What's the pitch for the comic? What is this all about? So um, I'd say I'm very. You know, I really like the uh, the modern comics that are kind of callbacks to the Golden Age and uh, mm-hmm. Silver Age, and yeah. uh, some something about Darwin Cook's New Frontier. I think really, you know, that's been the biggest inspiration for me. I just absolutely love that story. Yeah, and um, you know the the style of that era as well. I think it's there's a lot of creativity behind it. Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's one of the, I'm going to say, most fondly remembered comics and, and a big inspiration. So, all right, so this kind of golden age uh, throwback and I, I the, the story is really going to take place in that setting? Yeah, it's set in, uh, well, this story is set in 1952. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the hope is going to be kind of like Hellboy, you know, each year push it forward a little bit. And so uh, the 1952 story and then a 53, 54 and you know, going like that, and the yeah. the backup story not to uh, not to step on Alan Moore's toes, but the backup story is a sort of Victorian era team of uh, monster hunters and vigilantes. Very nice, and it's set in the uh, in the same universe. Yes, it's all, all the stuff that I'm going to write is going to be set in a big shared universe. Ah, perfect. And who's the uh, who's the creative team for your backup, or is it the same creative team? It's uh, myself and an artist who I just started recently working with. Uh, I don't actually know his name. <laughs> don't actually know his name. Uh, <laughs> he's been working sort of um, anonymously through email addresses that aren't his name. I'll yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Nope, I understand completely. <laughs> but fantastic artwork, though. And tell me, so the the story you said, Monster Hunters. Uh, so again, kind of a, a same different era uh, that they're 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 in. Yeah, so this is going to be set in the uh, the very late 1800s, and the the first adventure, which is going to be a eight page 
backup for the main comic is um, they're going up against Dracula. Oh, nice. Yeah, Excellent. classic. Yeah, I start with the classics there. It's uh, it. and, and so eight pages. I, I and the uh, the first issue. I, I'm looking at your page. Is so sixty four pages is is the total count. I mean, that's a that's a huge ambitious uh, first jump. Sixty four pages for the main story and another eight on the backup. Wow! Oh, another eight. So not even including yeah. the backup. That's incredible. Yeah. And and you you've got at least thirty uh, data pages and things in there. I've got a yeah. I've got. Eight pages done, four colored, four inked. Very nice. And, uh, yeah. Very good. Now, and the entire book is going to be it's colored. It's it's or is it black and white or or how's it all coming together? Everything's going to be colored. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, the other piece I want to mention, you got a, a pretty big, I would say, superstar artist to do this uh, kind of this variant cover, or or it's your main cover actually. It's not your variant cover. Um, how, how'd you, you got, uh, Yannick Paquette. How'd you, uh, how'd you score that? I did. Yeah. I was, um, you know, for, for me, it's my first comic. So it's something of a milestone and wanted to do something that really, uh, you know, makes it memorable, makes it pop. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a few, a few artists I was looking into. Um, I almost actually missed Yannick because I sent him well, one message on Facebook and, uh, didn't hear back and thought, you know, maybe he's busy. Uh, saw him on Instagram and tried him there, and he was, uh, you know, happy to happy to get started. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad the persistence paid off because uh, this this opening cover looks really good. It has the, the your your full team there, and uh, you know, it yeah. looks great. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I was um, pretty happy with it. So, so how you know you, you mentioned you, you always wanted to do a comic. You, you you took a bit of time, and then you jumped into it. Found it an easier experience. Thought got a great creative team behind you. Um, as the writer for all this, what how how was the experience for you? I mean, you, you to see your story come to life. What what was that like? Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's been really really good. Um, I started off with a different story. Uh, I think I showed you some complete mm-hmm. pages for that, and um, it was kind of frustrating. I had this other story written out and tried, kind of sat sat down and tried writing sequels for it, and mm-hmm. um, you know, wasn't really. Uh, wasn't really coming through, uh, but I had this other story that I had um, kind of shelved, and decided to pull that out and extend it up sixty-four pages. I was a lot happier with it, and uh, you know, really closer to the kind of story that I wanted to tell. Is you, you mentioned uh, New Frontier as, as an inspiration? Is also is it fair to say that things like the Justice Society, maybe even Watchmen, part of the flashbacks, is that also part of the the feel that you have going here? Uh, yeah, it's a um, justice society uh, to an extent challenges the unknown, and yeah. uh, and the other thing is kind of the um, you know the fifties. So the the idea behind this is um, you know in the nineteen forties you had the justice society come together, and then yeah. there was this kind of gap in the fifties where superheroes kind of took a dip, mm-hmm. and so you don't really have many fresh sto- uh, superhero stories from that era, and the thinking behind it was you know what were the what would a superhero team that assembled in the fifties look like? Yeah. And, and, and was it, um, you know, it, I keep, I keep being struck by, you know, when, when you look at the campaign, you go to the site and you look at the pages you have up, you look at the the artist that you're able to get the, you know, Yannick and everything else. Um, but this is still your first go at it. I mean, as a, as a first effort, um, it's, it's looks incredibly strong. I, I mean, how, uh, what was, I guess my question would be, what, what was the hard part? You know, what was the part where you, uh, if, if, looking back on it now, you'd say that was the, this was the toughest part of putting this comic together. Uh, it's still definitely uh, visibility. <laughs> yeah. It's just, um, you know, you can spend a week, you know, just on social media hours a day and only come away with a few people back in it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but the, you know, getting all the moving parts together was definitely the easiest part. There's a lot of people looking for work in comics. Yeah, that's uh, well, that's good and bad, right? I think uh, it is, yeah. You know, I, it's it's funny that we've hit a place right now where you know, for for many many years, um, the hard part was you know finding the people, getting it printed, you know, the logistics of getting a comic done. Um, now with the kind of advancing technology, being able to to reach out, and unfortunately, the state of the industry where you have a lot of people kind of at your disposal, it, we're we're down to marketing. 
if you will. It's it's just visibility is now our core problem. It is, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of people, um, you know, they're kind of, um, especially for a first campaign, they kind of look at it and they're like, uh, is this guy going to deliver? Am I going to get a, a comic that's been, you know, stapled together in a in someone's bedroom and just, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And, yeah, I mean, I understand it's, uh, you know, for someone just first dipping their toe into it, it's not as uh, easy as, you know, backing something by Scott Snyder or Sean Gordon Murphy. Well, sure. You know, there there is that trust factor. And we have seen people who've uh, run campaigns and, and they realize kind of in that last mile, the fulfillment mile, um, it, it gets blown. There's been plenty and plenty yeah. of stories around that. How, yeah. how are you helping, or, you know, helping yourself, I would guess, you know, you got the comic uh, created, you're, you're putting the pieces together. Do you, do you have, or have you already gotten started on how that fulfillment's going to work? I've already got a contact for a fulfillment center and um, I think Zoop offers fulfillment services as well. They do? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I might look into those guys as well. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, overall, you know, there, there is a, if you've seen enough of these, you do start to get a feeling of um, the people, it, when the people kind of <laughs> know what's in front of them when they don't. And just the way your site's laid out and the, the, the work you've done. And certainly, you know, you and I have been in touch a bit. Um, you know, I, you, you're one of these people who uh, clearly has, has thought through some of these things. And I have, you know, zero uh, concerns that you'll fulfill. Uh, but, but proving that to other people is, as you say, it's, it's time consuming and it's a lot of work. It is, yeah. And, uh, and I understand it, you know. Uh, I think everyone's, everyone's back to campaign that's been, you know, three, four years late. and. Mm-hmm have those moments where you wonder if you're going to get it at all. And yeah. Well, sure. And even from big, uh, big names, I mean, Joe mad, you know, st- <laughs> still has a comic he's trying to fulfill. Um, you it know, was so- the, um, there was someone who had a campaign up and they fulfilled it through Amazon, but the people who backed it on Indiegogo or Kickstarter just never got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I think there's been a lot of those moments and, and it does yeah. feel like that's the big missing gap. Um, how you you're you so your campaign's running on Indiegogo now? There's a lot of choices, obviously Zoop and and Kickstarter, Indiegogo. Any reason you picked um, one over the other? Mostly, it was input from the creative team. Uh, everyone I'm working with, they've done campaigns before, and they said they've had the best success on Indiegogo. So uh, you know, trusted those guys. Yeah, uh, well, that's <laughs> trusting the team. What a crazy concept! No, that's that's. Yeah. <laughs> that's right um i mean i i had done the the book with larry uh through indiegogo uh, not because of uh, you know any of the the various uh, pros and cons surrounding it but just the the money was distributed and put you know cleanly that way for mine was for yeah. most boring tax reasons uh it, it made sense yeah so it's, it's a really simple and transparent site for sure yeah I, I think uh, I, I'm still struck by 64 pages. It's it's a big graphic novel. It's um, you know you have a, a pretty reasonable price. Now you're going to be fulfilling this, of course, out of uh, you know out of Europe, out of the out of um, uh, the UK, right? Or uh, no, I'm hoping to fulfill it on the uh, over in the US. Okay, so that's oh, okay. Where I'd estimate most of the customers would be. That makes it a lot easier. Yeah, um, it does. But the pricing point is is really nice. I mean, there's a lot of comic books out there. You have a um, kind of you know, the you know the basic, the core again, sixty four pages, um, all full color, uh, put together twenty four dollars, uh, pretty nice. And you're you're hoping to uh, your belief is you're going to get it out this year into people's hands in in, in December. That's when I've said it. That's uh, the, the comic. I think will definitely be done probably by September, and. Uh, yeah, after that, Perfect. it's just going to be getting its fulfillment. And, and you mentioned a little bit earlier, but your your real hope is that this is the first of of many comics, right? Definitely, and uh, probably, hopefully, not just Unbreakable Arguments as a title, but other titles that can go along with it. Well, that's why you have the backup, right? I mean, all these stories yep. can start to spawn off into their own in their own pieces. Absolutely, yeah. Well. I, uh, again, first time creator, a really, really nice put, put together. And um, you've been seeing the, the links and everything on your screen. Um, tell me about uh, tell me about other books and not to stray away from this topic a little bit, but, but you know, other things that maybe you're reading right now or how, what's your take on, on current comics and, and what are you reading? What are you liking? I think that um, current comics, it's, uh, I think there's a lot of, you know, mismatch 
you know, you see mm-hmm. people get put on titles and you kind of think, um, you know, I don't know about that. But um, I will say I'm really excited to find out that uh, Brian Edward Hill's doing Blade. That's, yeah. That's uh, really going to be exciting. And, I saw um, the news come by. That's a that's a great pairing, I think. Oh, yeah, it's a brilliant pairing. And um, currently I've got a couple of old and new comics that I'm working my way through. Um, Philip Kennedy, Philip Kennedy Johnson on Action Comics. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's probably the best run at the moment. Nice long run um, for a change, too. Yeah, so uh, hopefully he gets to stay on there a couple more years at least. And, I, I, um, yeah. And working my way through uh, Commandy of all things. Oh, nice. I really like Commandy. <laughs> yeah, I like, um, I think I'm in the tiny, tiny minority of pe- people who mostly think of Jack Kirby as a DC creator. Okay, yeah. Just because um never been a huge Marvel guy. Uh, Bronze Age Marvel, definitely. But, um, a lot of the oh. Jack Kirby stuff I've read is from his time at DC, you know, like Etrigan and New Gods. No, I think, I think um, you know, it's interesting you say that. I mean, I think that um, I always viewed the Jack Kirby's Marvel work as, as kind of work he was doing for a company and his DC work as you know, work he was doing for himself to some extent because we got more of his ideas and more of his creativity, I would say, coming out of DC. I mean, he did amazing things in Marvel for sure, but definitely, I think yeah. the DC was at next level. Yeah, I think he definitely... Um, you know, okay, you get Jack Kirby in the seventies, and I uh, think you're going to let him do pretty much anything he, he wants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's a nice collection of back. I, you know, you mentioned something I wanted to come back to though: um, putting the right creator on the right comic. And I think I'm curious to ask you about it for what you're reading, but then also yours. Um, you know, as mentioned, you know, Brian Edward Hill on Blade. He for years he's talked about enjoying the blade movies and, and kind of his style of writing. And it just, it feels like the most obvious thing in the world to put him on this title, but you're right. They, they do put creators and who I think take a decent amount of criticism, but they're put on books that absolutely don't match the writing style. And so you you always kind of wonder why would, who thought this was going to work? You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Uh, Like, um, I mean, I'm not going to name any names, but you know, you, you read some books and it's, you know, it's a book that you mostly think of as Mania's action or, uh, you know, sci-fi adventures and then read it and the writer's a lot more into, uh, you know, slice of life or, um, you know, comedy maybe. Yeah. And and there are characters out there in, in the companies that, that do that is their genre, but they they match. I mean, you, you'd think that creator would be far more successful if you could just put them on the project that fits their writing style and there's, there's books that exist, but... I, I do think that that sets people up for you know a, a lack of success. Yeah, and I'll also add that um, you know you see sometimes it kind of goes in the um, you know they're more happy to get a superstar writer on something even if it's even if it shortens that book. Yeah, so you see like um, you know one of the most exciting things of the last year was Jeff Johns come back to Justice Society, mm-hmm. um, but at the same time I was one of I think many people who really really wanted Robert Venditti on that. Yeah. And uh, maybe it would have lasted longer. Maybe not, but you know, I think that would have been a pretty perfect pairing. Oh, I agree completely. Yeah, I mean, and in particular with stuff he's done in the past, I, I, I think um, it, it's just it's an interesting piece because there is a lot of criticism that goes out on comics, but there's a lot of really talented people, and in many cases, it just feels like the pieces are not assembled properly. And if they if they were, we'd see a lot more success and I would think, I think a lot more, a lot less uh, of the noise and the criticism. They just, we paired people up better. Yeah. And I think the, the other thing is a lot of the writers will say what they want to do, you know, they'll make it, known yeah. that, um, you know, I think uh, like, you know, it's come back to Robert Venditti. He was talking about, uh, he really wanted to write Superman. And then we finally got him on Superman 78 and he had the uh, man of tomorrow specials and, yeah. uh, you know, great stories. Yeah, I, I think uh, creators often know there, there's been this um, uh, industry belief that's come up a lot where if if a writer really expresses an interest in a character, you, you shouldn't put the writer on that character because they, they'll they'll have a blind spot. They'll be too in love with it. And I've, I've always found that just the most absurd logic <laughs> I've ever heard. It is, yeah. And it doesn't really, um, you don't really see it in other creative uh, industries. You know? No. No, you don't. You don't see, uh, you know, you don't see people saying to uh, Axel Rose, "Why don't you do a rap album for us or anything like that?" <laughs> that would be horrific. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I, no, and and nobody's going up to Quentin Tarantino saying, "You know, you really need uh, slapstick comedy and 
you know. <laughs> Why don't you do uh, Frozen 3? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It it is strange, and and so in in you know picking the you, you mentioned the talent search you did for your book um, was a lot of that just you know, and this is more on the of course on the art than the writers. You're the writer, but the, with the art, I mean, was there a lot of you know in your conversations? And I think this is helpful for anyone who's making a comic looking to reach out to an artist. How much are you telling that artist around? Hey, I, th- I think your style works. This is what I'm trying to do. Does this time period and all that stuff interest you? Was it was a lot of that part of the conversation? It was, yeah. Um, when I was advertising for an artist, I basically said, um, you know, made it known that I wanted someone who could do American style comics mm-hmm. uh, because most of the artists looking for work are really more into manga, right? Right. And so I had you know a lot of people come through, and even if they, uh, you know, even if they could do Western style, you could tell that what they really wanted to do was manga. Yeah. And um, you know, when I when I started talking with Daniel, I, I said. Um, you know, how, you know, do you want to do a golden age comic? And he was like, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there were some moments where I, I knew what I wanted to draw, but I didn't, um, you know, cause I'm not an artist. So I had to kind of convey the idea of it to him. Uh, so for example, there's a panel on one of the pages up on the website where it's, um, you have these, uh, you know, pirates and they're on these, uh, kind of futuristic hover bikes. Right. And, uh, I remember saying to Daniel, could you do something that looks you know, it looks retro, but it looks sci-fi at the same time. And he's, yeah, and he came through and absolutely perfect. No, I, again, the, the art looks looks great. And I, I do really think is, you know, for people who are looking on a screen, you know, it, it looks great in black and white, but I, I, I keep coming back to it. I got to, you know, tip my hat to the, the colorist. The colorist really brings out the art. It's it's um, one of the things I think we're seeing in a lot of comics, and including the big mainstream comics, is that the colorist and the the pencil or inker feel disconnected at, at, at various moments. They, it, it doesn't feel like it's a natural, a natural pairing. And in your book, if I look at kind of the setting and, and how the lights being used and light kind of coming over the buildings and have some of the fighting, it's the, the colorist is really adding a lot to the page, uh, which is uh, really great to see. He is. Yeah. Um, when I actually got the, uh, there was a time in between getting uh, Daniel on interiors and, talking to Russell about the colors and uh, had these, uh, you know, black and white uh, pages. And uh, like an idiot, I put them into paint and was just like, uh, well, let's just see, uh, let's <laughs> see if I can color this through paint. Through paint. And, um, you know, staring at these pages thinking this is not good. And uh, f- finally got it through to the colorist and got it back and uh, really appreciate how much the colorist brings to it. It, it's it it enhances the art and that's not always what you get uh, i mean the your black and white art looks great but the coloring takes it to a, a very different level and it's uh no it's 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 wonderful yeah um, I'm working on the uh, working on the projects i've just got new respect for everyone involved yeah yeah it's it's when you see those pieces come together it does give you a new appreciation um, it really does yeah and I mean, I would also think, you know, in terms of kind of difficulty for an artist, um, a lot of artists today, I know some other people doing projects, they they hate doing flashbacks or things set in a different time period. It, it hurts them for some of the photo reference that they can get their hands on. It limits some of their option. Um, I mean, here you've got a, a large, you know, again, 64 page comic and, you know, there's this train chase, there's uh, things happening in the city and it's, it's not, uh, this is not the easiest gig for an artist to come and do, um, given kind of the time period. No, and I, uh, you know, I kind of sent some uh, references to Daniel saying, like, um, you know, for the train, I think it should be a locomotive, and uh, told him which city it's set in, which is going to be set in uh, Portland, like right. nineteen fifties Portland. <laughs> uh, most of the story is set up in the uh, Pacific Northwest, and then they're going to head out into the Pacific to rescue uh, their friends and. As I go on, it's going to be set more globally, and uh, okay. yeah, um, that was one of the kind of concerns. But Daniel did it effortlessly; just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's 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 a hard uh, it's a very hard job to I think represent that time period and have it look authentic, and it it definitely does. Um, you know, but kind of back to marketing for a minute. You know, you you mentioned uh, you know getting the word out. That's that's now become the the most difficult part as a first time creator. But you get that one comic out there, you get the confidence of doing it, fulfilling it, and then you, you know your world can grow from there. Um, what what do you make of like what when you look at 
at different creators kind of getting the world. There's, there's people who go on streams, there's, you know, video interviews like this one, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, anything that you think works better or worse, or that, it, you know, how, how much of a struggle It's it's almost a different muscle that you have to really apply from the coming up with the comic to then talking about it, and promoting it. Yeah. So, um, I actually made a, uh, sub stack and was out kind of promoting the sub stack before going live on Indiegogo. So I had, you know, some people ready to go. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, that's, that's one piece of advice I definitely give is, you know, you want to be marketing it for a couple of months, maybe before you go live for and sure. just building up and just building up an audience and telling them what to expect and, you know, what your influences are and communicating with them along the way. And, uh, but I think video platforms probably a lot better than uh, like DeviantArt and Pinterest. I haven't had anything from. Um, most of my success in finding an audience has been Reddit, and yeah. uh, and uh, you gave me a shout out a couple of months ago, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I need to do more because <laughs> no, one, uh, <laughs> one of these things. Uh, I, I mean, I really do think it's it's very easy. I fall into this trap. I think a lot of people do. Uh, where you hard comment on uh, the big two because that's where the news is and that's where um, you know these are these characters that we've grown up with and so that's what people want to focus on. But the work you're doing is the antidote. So for all the people all the time who are frustrated, they're they're seeing comics not going the direction they want to be. They're not hitting in the right way. I mean, you know, being mad is one thing, but the the antidote is supporting products like this one. Where, you know, you, and, and by the way, uh, from, from everything that I've seen, you know, your social media, you're not going to war with anybody. You're just putting out a comic. Yeah. And um, that is the anyone, right answer. Yeah. I mean, anyone who wants to buy it, anyone who uh, thinks it looks interesting, you know, there's no, um, one of the reasons I said it in the past is so it, I think it makes it a lot easier to make it feel timeless. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not getting stuck down and you're not thinking uh, I should comment on something happening today and if people like the golden age then they like the golden age and makes it a lot more accessible. Yeah. Um, not to spoil it, but how much of this comic, uh, is going to tease up future versions? Are you going to, you know, and if you don't, if you don't want to answer, it's okay, but is this going to cliffhanger at the end? Is it going to be a complete story, but then you're going to open the door up for more or what, what should people expect there? So it's a, uh, it's a complete story, That's uh, nice. but as it winds, as it winds down through the last few pages, it's going to immediately tease the next story. Okay. So it's going to, uh, I'm not going to spoil it too much. No, please. Yeah. Don't it's going to be a introduction of a new character and you're going to want to see what's going to happen with him. Wonderful. I, um, I know I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by everything you've done here. And I think, I, I guess I would ask, there's a lot of people who listen to, uh, to this channel who have, uh, YouTube sites and, and your, your, your own, um, I'd really, really would appreciate it. If you, if you enjoyed this channel, give Ashley a shout and, uh, you know, pass the word around, please. Cause, uh, it won't take much time, uh, to just, just do this and, and get, get some of this, uh, momentum going. Cause I, I know you've been working on this for a long time and I've, I've seen, you know, a small piece of your journey and you're, you're an incredibly earnest guy who's just trying to put out a good comic and that's, that's what Thank it you. should all be about. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's not going to be any, um, uh, you know, preaching or uh, politics or anything like that. And it's just a fun classic adventure comic for people who like, uh, you know, pulpy mm -hmm. sort of adventures and justice society and classic justice league adventures and that sort of thing. Oh, that's, that's perfect. And, and I also think, uh, you know, to the credit of your art team, you know, uh, to, uh, to Daniel, uh, to Russell, um, it's, it, I want to see them get on a bigger stage as well, because the, the work really is quite eye opening and impressive here. It is. It's fantastic, yeah. And uh, pretty much everywhere I do it, I usually, um, like if I put something up on DeviantArt or uh, Reddit, I usually try and credit whoever was on the on the page. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's uh, it's great stuff. Uh, well, Ashley, I, I wanted to ask or, or offer this, and, and so um, as we go along with this, I'd like to, to keep the journey over the next 30-odd uh, days or so the campaign is running. Um, you know, let's, uh, let's get the visibility out there. I'll keep mentioning it, uh, certainly in my videos and, and do some community posts, but let's, uh, I would love to, to catch up with you as we go and, you know, see how it's going and see what you're learning. And, and I, I guess I'll, I'll leave you with one, one question here before we kind of wrap up today, but, um, any one thing you do differently that might be good advice for 
for new creators trying to do the same thing? Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, I think definitely spend more time on the lead up to the campaign itself. Uh, I think that's really where you want to spend more of your attention is, you know, building something up before the campaign goes live and getting, uh, you know, appearances and seeing if people will have you on and marketing and that sort of thing. Definitely. Well, that's good advice. And it, it, uh, it is one of those things that snowballs a little bit. Do, do you think there's a risk? And I've heard this from other creators where, um, they feel like if they do this wrong, they feel like they've now committed themselves to being a, a YouTube streamer as opposed to a comic creator that they're having to do it constantly. Have you, have you seen that side of it as well? Def- <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, I think there's some people who, um, definitely there's some people who have kind of built up the, uh, what do you call it? YouTube personality. Yeah. And, for sure. uh, you know, that's where I think for a lot of people, they've made that their job. And, you know, you see some people coming up with, uh, drama over things that really shouldn't be and, uh, inferring insults where I don't think they are. And, you know, just to keep the drama alive. Well, I mean, it's easy. It, the, the thing about it that I think so much of a trap is that, you know, you're, you're making a comic, but a comic is a, is a marathon. It's, it's finding the team, it's getting the work in, it's getting it printed, it's getting it shipped. I mean, that's, that's, those are not things that happen quickly as opposed to, um, you know, building up kind of an internet personality can be extremely quick. You, you come in, you talk, you get kind of instant gratification, you, you do it again tomorrow. Um, it's, it's just a very different, different piece. And, and by the way, no, no, nothing against it. I mean, different people are going to go for different things, but, yeah. um, I've just talked to a lot of comic creators who get to the point where they believe they trap. Uh, they I think want- one of the, um, one of the risks there is if you're, if you're in it for the comic, you end up in this spot where, um, people become a lot less interested in you as a creator and a lot more interested in just, you know, I want to hear this guy's opinion on something that happened today and you know yeah. you do a maybe you do a video talking about the progress of the comic and people are like i don't care about this talk about um you know talk about trump well for sure i i mean i'll, I'll tell you um you know despite i i have a you know great great audience uh, people who support the channel really appreciate you know everybody who comes in and listens um but it's not lost on me that people will say you know hey we don't want to hear about the drama but we'd love to hear more about indie comics but then i'll do a video on indie comics and it's you know, less than half of the views as if yeah. I'm talking about, you know, something Dan Slott said. I think also there's a, there's an assumption of what indie comics are. So it's like, there's a, you know, if it's not from this group, then it's, we just assume it's something. And if it's not from this group, then we assume that it's something like, um, hmm. when I was talking to people and saying, like, just mentioning the people, the fact that the comic was up on Indiegogo, you had mm-hmm. people kind of assuming that it was a certain type of comic and, oh, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to back a comic on Indiegogo. Could you move it to Kickstarter? And no, I've already, uh, you know, I've already got people buying this over on Indiegogo. I'm not just going to close it down and move to Kickstarter. But yeah, you know, it's just really weird and seeing people in this kind of state where they decide whether they want to buy a comic based on which website it's up on, and you know. No, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, so I keep stressing the point. I mean, it's, um, uh, Indiegogo Kickstarter. I, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's the interface and it's, it's how the money is moved and it's what's going to work best for people. I mean, but it, it happens to people big and small. I remember, uh, Sean Murphy, when he did his uh, plot holes comic had plenty of people coming to him. I think he talked about it on the air of, um, Hey, I, I'm not going to support that thing on Indiegogo, uh, but, Indiegogo worked for him in terms of fulfillment and just how the money moved. And, and it was just baffling that, you know, that stuff's coming up, but it's, um, uh, it's a shame. We are, we are stuck in that place at the moment, unfortunately. And the funny thing is it's not anything Indiegogo's done, you know, it's just, right. we feel like, uh, you know, we feel like this certain group of people has chosen Indiegogo and therefore there's something wrong with Indiegogo. And, you know, and, uh, well, yeah, and it, and the the part that's confusing about it is is always like it's it's very easy not to buy it. You just you don't you don't click. Yeah, at, yeah. at the end, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But today, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, all these different platforms have all kinds of comics by all kinds of groups and people and everything else, and and uh, feels well, feels I mean, pretty easy to support or not support. I was going to say also the funny thing is some will say I'm not I'm not buying a comic on Indiegogo, and then a week later they'll promote a completely uh, you know, non-comic book related thing on Indiegogo, like uh, check out this really cool desk lamp or uh, 
you know, check out this <laughs> this great new piece of luggage. Yeah, I I I, I don't get it. Um, I mean, no. it's 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 a bizarre thing people have done to themselves, and and hopefully, I you know what, it, for for better or worse, I do see it's it you know two years ago, it was way worse. I think um, oh, for sure, yeah. I do see that it's 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 getting better, but you know, I mean, I've had people, um, you know, people who mainstream pros who are definitely, I think, a bit more uh, aggressive a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot more open to it now, and happy to give you a retweet and kind words and everything. It, it's uh, you know, there's there's a handful of people who who've always been loud and they're getting louder, but it, it does feel like overall, kind of in the uh, the, the mainstream of people, there's there's just uh, there's there's exhaustion, and, and thank goodness for that a little bit. <laughs> well, I think the uh, the people really obsessed with drama, I think, have kind of uh, built a you know built a wall around themselves, and yeah. a lot of people are just tuning out. Well, I hope, uh, you know, hopefully uh, none of this is, is hitting your comic. And if it is, it's easy to move, move past it because it, it really is a great book. It's a nice, it's a great price point for all you get. And um, no, Ashley, I, I want to just thank you for, for talking with me today and, and showing off your title. And I really hope people who listen to this run out there and, and back it, you know, big or small, uh, because I think uh, these kinds of efforts need to be supported and rewarded. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. And um, I will say, uh, I should mention that the um, the perks you can get it for as little as six dollars for the first thirty two pages on the PDF. Wow! So very low risk if you uh, you know if you just want to give it a casual look. That's great. That's a that's mm -hmm. a great price point. Um, that's a comicsology competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Well, especially again yeah. for the volume of book you're getting. I mean, we're we're getting uh, we're getting mainstream comics coming in at, at ten bucks, and they, mm -hmm. they don't have uh, anywhere close to you know, the volume of pages here and, uh, you know, and, and, it, you know, they've got the, the, the benefit of this giant corporation behind them and the efficiencies of scale, you're, you're bootstrapping this yourself and, and still it's incredibly competitive. So well done. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, well, Ashley, we'll catch up with you and make sure we follow this journey here to the end. And, uh, for everybody listening, please click on the link in the description of the video. I know you've seen some things on the screen, but in the description, you've got a link there. Also, uh, Ashley Substack, you can also click and, and subscribe and follow. And, uh, Ashley, I wish you all the luck in the world and, and anything I can do to help. All you need to do is reach out and ask. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.